Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with our next Scratch lesson. And in this tutorial, we're talking importing. We really can't talk about anything else inside of Scratch until we get some media into our projects and into our timeline. So let's keep this intro short and let's just get into Scratch and let's get started. All right, as you can see, we are in the construct module of Scratch. And I did mention in this lesson, in the intro, that we are doing importing. I've decided to break importing down into two different lessons. This lesson, we're going to talk about importing for a daily's workflow. And in the next lesson where we talk about importing, it's going to be talking about importing for a conform. So basically importing whether XMLs, you know, AAF files, to take a timeline from Media Composer, from Premiere, from Final Cut, and take it and finish it inside of Scratch. Now, a couple things that I do want to talk about before we get rolling talking about importing, and that is, first of all, we decided in our previous lesson that we were going to get in and set our project to be 1920 by 1080, 23, 976 frames per second, or 1080p. And I was pretty sure that that's what I wanted to have it set up as. And to be honest, I was 100% sure. But let's just say hypothetically you got in and created a project that didn't have the settings that you needed them to be, the raster dimension, and you needed to change that. Well, Many people think that you're going to get in, you're going to delete that project, start again from scratch. But if you were listening in the previous lesson, I did mention the fact that mostly everything inside of Scratch, probably about 99% of things, that once you set them are a starting point. And from that point forward, if you need to get in and change things, you can change them. They were just that, a starting point. And that's the same with your project settings. Now, we've gotten in and set our timeline to be a 1080p timeline. And if you take a look at what's going to happen when I bring the mouse over top of that down here in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to notice that a pop-up appears and says, change the timeline resolution and frame rate on the main output node in the render tab. Well, okay, let's do that. I'm going to come to the render tab. Well, there's the main output node. And if I select it, you'll notice down here, I have the ability to get in and change this. Let's just change this to be a, let's change it to be a 2K scope timeline. Now, you will notice that what happens is my thumbnail actually changes to be a scope thumbnail. And now if you take a look in the lower right hand corner, you'll see that our timeline information has been updated from HD to 2K. So we would be all set to go. Now, I'm just going to switch this back. And I do want to mention we are changing the parameters of the current timeline, not of the overall project. We can have different timelines that are set up at different raster dimensions. However, if I was to create a new timeline, it will still default back to what we had set our project settings to to create new sequences by default. But as I said, we can get in at any time and change any one of these options like that at the snap of a finger. Let's go back to construct. And the last thing that I want to point out to you is a couple little helpers that we have on the left and right side of the screen that we don't see unless we need them to be seen. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap left and then I'm going to tap right. Now you'll notice that over here on the left, we have a window that says project and properties. And on the right, we have a window that says metadata and sources. Now for the most part, inside of each one of the different modules, this left window is going to focus on metadata, sources, and versions. Now don't worry about what any of that means for right now, because we're going to talk about those in their own dedicated lesson. In this lesson, I need to focus on what is going on over here on the left hand side. Now again, this window will change based on what module we have selected inside of the construct window. We have access to project and we have access to properties. Now you'll notice that inside the properties, we have a few unique properties, one specifically being Kevin's test metadata. Now this is actually very handy if you want to get in and set your projects properties to get in and enter all this information. And at any point, you can add new information. So let's just say you needed to put in the shoot start date. You can come down, say add, type in shoot start date. We'll just delete all that was there before, hit enter. We can then come in and enter whatever value we need to enter. Now, hypothetically, you might need to add 15 other things that you want to get in here and set when you create each new project. So how do we actually get in and change the project properties so that they'll display the exact ones that we want to see when we create a new project. Well, this is why I didn't want to jump in and talk too much about the settings in the first lesson, because as you see, we're going to pick out little bites, little little sort of nuggets of settings as we go that we can jump in and take a look at. And this is specifically one of them. I'm going to close the project. I'm going to come to the system settings and you'll see that I am in the metadata tab here. You'll start on the general tab, but we'll want to navigate to the metadata tab. And this is where you can get in 
and add whatever metadata. You can just see we can add new item. We'll just come in, we'll just type in whatever. Okay. You'll see that when I click somewhere else, it's now called whatever. I can say OK. I can enter this project. I can come to properties. And there's now whatever as a base metadata property parameter for the project. Now you might be thinking, Kev, is it even really important for me to enter any information in the properties window? Well, that's an it depends question. Are you going to be exporting a lot of reports from scratch? Well, if you are, you're going to want to enter that information here so you don't have to do it manually after the fact. Now, talking about metadata, metadata is something you're going to hear us talk about a lot through this entire course. Metadata is something that Scratch, you know, is a machine with. You know, if you're brand new to Scratch, uh, but not necessarily brand new to editing, you know that metadata is something that's exceptionally important. Metadata is the information that we can tag to a clip specifically. In this case, this is metadata for our project. But when we talk about metadata inside of Scratch, it's what's attached to the clip. And you'll see very quickly that M Scratch is really a metadata machine and it can actually process a ton of metadata and pass it on, not basically not only just inside of Scratch, but over to other editing applications as well, like Avid Media Composer. But let's save that for the lesson where we talk about that, all right? So let's come back to project. And what we're now going to do is to import some media. Let's come down to import clips. And once we're ready to import clips, you'll notice that we're actually already in the folder of the clips that I'd like to bring in. Now you'll see that it's called Horror Show. And basically when we're setting up a dailies workflow, we're gonna to wanna to get in and assign each one of these cards to their own timeline, all right? Now you'll notice that the first problem that I run into is that if I actually hide out a scratch and I come to that folder on my media drive here, and we just come in here, you'll notice that there's actually more than two clips. Now I have the clips called scene one, take one, two, three, scene two, take one and take two. But you'll notice that inside of Scratch, I don't actually see that. I only see the clip, but I can see that there's three attached to it, meaning that there is actually take one, two, and three, and that here there's take one and two. But I really need to see those for when I bring them into Scratch. So what I have the ability to do is just to uncollapse those clips so that I can see them all at one time. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you is for the sake of you knowing where things are. Is it necessary to uncollapse those clips before we bring them into Scratch? No, it's not. You can simply select the collapse clips, bring them in, and you'd have access to all five of them inside of the construct window. All right, so let's talk about doing things the long way first, because I always like to show that before I get in and show you the easy way to do it. What we would do is we would select all of these clips, and I would simply come down and I'd say open. Now you'll notice that I'm immediately told that these clips don't match the raster dimension of the current timeline and the project default settings. Do I want to update them? And the answer is no, I don't want to update the timeline and the project default settings. Now you'll see that I actually have all the clips attached to my mouse. Now inside of Scratch, we deal with things a little bit differently than you might be familiar with inside of other editing applications. We don't deal with bins, we deal with slots inside of Scratch. Each clip gets its own slot. And what I like to tell people is the easiest way to think of a slot is to think of it as almost like a bag. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a clip in each one of the bags. And when we start creating versions of clips, we wanna do different grades on clips. We're gonna be putting the grades into each one of the bags. So this way, when we need to take a clip and look at it, we can just take a look inside that bag or inside that slot and see everything that's associated with that specific clip without having to do any crazy navigation or anything like that. So let's put these clips in their slots. Now you'll notice that we have timeline one highlighted up here. So if I come down here and come over to slot zero and I simply just click like such, you'll notice that these clips are now dropped into their slots. You'll notice we have a few extra slots down here, which is perfectly fine because what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna tell Scratch to remove all of those empty slots. All right, five clips, five slots, fairly self-explanatory. Now this is timeline number one. I can see it's called timeline number one up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get in and edit this information. We're just gonna call group one, we'll call this horror show. Okay, and we'll call timeline one, card one. Okay, now I'm only gonna import one more card because to be honest, this is the long way of doing things. And I wanna show you the really fast way of doing things because in most cases, that's the way you wanna do things. But it's important for me to show you the basics and the foundations first, you know, we got to learn how to, you know, crawl before we learn how to walk. 
So let's come over here. Let's add a new timeline. We'll call this appropriately enough card two. Now you'll notice that it might seem that all of our clips that were in card one have disappeared, but I can simply click on card one and I can now see them in all of their slots here set to go. So let's do the same thing here. Now let's import some clips. Let's come to card two. We're going to select everything. I'm going to come down and say open and we're going to drop them into their slots and we'll just remove any of the empty slots. Now, unbeknownst to us, we've actually created a bit of a problem here. I'm just going to hide out of scratch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this clip and we're going to open it with media info. Now on the Mac, media info never wants to open the proper way. It always wants to open media info and then I have to take the clip and then drag it in there. Now you'll remember that Scratch prompted us and said, well, the clip doesn't match the timelines settings. And that's because these clips are UHD 3840 by 2160. Now that brings up a little bit of a problem. And the problem that it's brought up is the fact that I've taken these clips, I've dropped them into Scratch. And if I come to the edit module, what's actually happening here is that this clip is actually larger than the frame that it's sitting in. Okay, so there's actually extra bits of clip around here. So how do I know this? I'm going to come down to our settings and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the guides and inside of our guides, I'm going to come over here to where it says crop and I'm just going to turn the crop off just that you can see exactly what's going on here. So you can see there is our frame size. There is our clip. So if I didn't know to navigate into my settings, into my guides, and into crop, you might be thinking, well, there's something weird going on with this clip. Why don't I see all of it? What's happening here? Well, this is where we need to think about what we're doing. And it's imperative that no matter what you're doing, whether it's in Scratch or not, you're thinking through what you're doing every step of the way. You need to know all you can about your media before you get rolling. Now, we're going to talk here. I'm going to come back to the construct window. And actually, let's just turn our crop back off just so we can see this for this specific clip as an example. I'm going to come back to the construct module and inside the media browser, I would have known what the resolution of this clip is. Now, I'm going to dedicate a specific lesson to the media browser so that we can get in and navigate through some of these things once we start bringing media in. But for right now, I'm going to assume that you already knew that these clips were larger than that timeline because Scratch prompted us to. So how do we get in and set this up properly and quickly? Let me show you. What we're going to do is we're just going to come back here and I'm going to delete. We're just going to edit. I'm just going to select delete and we're going to delete these timelines that are in here so that we have a brand new timeline number one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back down to the import clips option. Inside of import clips, instead of coming into each card on its own, I'm going to select horror show. And what I'm going to tell Scratch that I want it to do is I want it to select the folder and to create a new timeline with it. I also know that these clips are larger than the 1920 by 1080 raster dimension. So what I have the ability to do from within the import clips window is say, well, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to shrink those down by width so that the width of the clips fit the width of my timeline. So let's do that right here. The scaling is going to fit the width. Now you'll notice that we can also get in and set some project metadata defaults, which I'm going to set this to be rec 709 at 2.4 and I'm going to leave that the way that it is. And I'm now going to come down and say open. Once I do that, I'm now going to be asked, okay, Kev, how do you want to bring these clips in? What group right here do we want to bring them into? We can bring them into the current group or we can create a new group from the folder name, meaning horror show. You'll see it tells me that right there. You'll see that we can also say new plus next number, which is group number one. So I'm going to create a new from folder name. And the timeline, how would we like to create those? Well, I don't want to have it as current timeline one. I want to have it new as per the subfolders. You'll see new per the folder name or new per each one of the subfolders. We've already set the framing of set to width, but you'll see we can also load and sync audio, calculate file size, and even apply LUTs directly from the clip import options window. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to say, okay, you'll see that what happens immediately, and I'm just going to delete group number one here. Let's just delete group number one. We'll turn off edit, is that a new group has been created called Horror Show that contains four timelines, each representing one of the cards that were folders inside of my media drive. And to take this concept one step further, let's pick a shot like this one right here. What I'm going to do is just click on it. You'll see that this shot has been scaled down so that it fits within the raster dimension 
and another ironclad way to make sure that that framing adjustment was made when we brought our clip in is to simply inside the edit module head to the framing tab and you'll see that right over here to the right of it our framing is set to fit width at 50 percent meaning it's taken our 3840 by 2160 raster dimension and cut it in half to make it 1920 by 1080. All right, so that's a good place to leave off for this lesson because in our next lesson, like I said earlier, we're going to talk about bringing in conforms from other nonlinear editing applications, how we're going to do that, and some problems that we might run into with the process. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels, and if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.